Welcome back. This is Tommy, the Clavenadian EMT. Thank you. Thank you very much. And this, of course, is uh, my co-host, Mr. Heibu. Heibu-chan. Nandeska. Yeah, he's being kind of quiet. That's cool. Uh, so today's episode, I kind of wanted to poke fun at myself and go over some of... Uh, uh, injuries and illnesses that I've had uh, as part of the job or on the job. Now, <clears throat> I can laugh at these because they happen to me. And, you know, they say uh, comedy is tragedy that happens to other people. So this is funny because it happened to me, not you. But um, So I'll go over some of the injuries and some of the illnesses I've picked up being a first responder now if you're going to be if you if you're going to become a first responder keep in mind i mean think about it you're going to be going into um assisted living places you're going to be going into schools you're going to be going into uh, homes hoarder houses you're going to be going into funky places um you're you're going to get injured you're going to get sick now i'm not talking firefighting i'm talking just going in to patch a person up that, you know, sliced themselves on a glass table or um, is having uh, difficulty breathing. Just, just by being there, so. Anyhow, uh, so uh, a few things that have happened to me over the years. Uh, th this was, this was bad. Um, well, I w yeah, it was bad. It sucked, but uh, we got called to uh, uh Guy had uh, had cardiac arrest while he was working out uh, one of these million dollar, uh, actually several million dollar mansions, um, and his workout room was like the top of uh, you know a third floor, top of the stairs, back the furthest back room, really narrow hallways, and uh, we're doing CPR, doing CPR. We load the guy up onto a poles and canvas, we call it, or a, a litter they called them in World War Two. You've probably seen um, European soccer player guys being hauled around on these things um, and then falling off, and that, that is hilarious, of course. Anyhow, so um, this guy had all kinds of, the patient had tons of equipment on him, and he was a very large guy, very um, tall, large man, like lurch-looking dude. And um, he had a Lucas device pounding away on him, and a uh, monitor, the uh, paramedics monitor, uh, oxygen tank. All, you know, collectively, we're probably looking at 500 pounds on this uh, thing. So we got four guys, um, one on each, you know, one each took a handle. And we're trying to weave through this uh, narrow hallway. And by the time we got down to the end of the hallway, um, I, I was pretty gassed trying to carry this guy. I, I think we all were. Um, and then we had to carry the guy down uh, all these stairs, and, uh, you know, they, of course, everyone's checking each other, you all right, you all right, and of course, like an idiot, you know, I said, yeah, I'm all right, there were plenty of people there that, that could have taken my place, but I just felt like, I actually did feel all right, but, um, we started carrying the guy down the stairs, and I turned a little bit sideways, and I felt this lightning bolt go like right through my back, you know, up to my shoulders. And I had, I knew that I had torn some thin muscle. Uh, the guy's wife was at the bottom of the stairs while we were carrying him out to the ambulance. And I was like, I was in so much pain, I could hardly even see straight. But I'm like, I am not going to drop this guy in front of his wife. So we made it out to the ambulance and um, they said, hey, I need, I need a firefighter to go with us. And, of course, I, I go, I'll go, I'll go. Um, my plan was to go with them, and because we were going to the ER, obviously, with this guy. Um, I wanted to go to the ER, too, because I, I, I felt pretty damaged. A um, uh, lot of pain, something was going on. So we took the guy in, and I just kind of leaned against the wall and slid down and called the nurse over and said i i need help uh, when we got to the hospital so um 
not sure about the patient, but uh, things turned out pretty well for me. I ended up having to go on light duty for a little while, doing some rehab, you know, which sucks because I hate any kind of rehab. I hate uh, physical rehab. Um, I haven't had the other kind of rehab. So, anyhow, uh, another time me and a partner got called to uh, a patient's house who had gone up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom. Uh, had fallen and we asked if we could transport them uh, to the hospital. They got very angry and said no, told us to all go away, so we all went away. Three hours later uh, we get called back to the same patient uh, who had completely um, literally shit the bed everywhere. You know, and this, this was a very sick person too. Um, it ended up being a CPR call. But uh, me and my partner, God, God bless her, um, we climbed over the sheets, all covered in poop. Poop. I got him trained to poop on cue. Who don't, not now. That was just a test. Um, but after the patient was uh, whistled away uh, to the emergency room, me and my partner were out in the out in the front yard, you know, trying to rub our shoes off in the grass and our hand, you know, trying to get cleaned up because we got quite a bit of shit on us um, trying to help this uh, patient out and uh, very gingerly made our way back to the uh, station, uh, scrubbed ourselves down, um, took a shower, uh, not together, don't start rumors, I need my pension, she married, anyhow. Um, put on new change of clothes. A few days later, uh, I'm in the hospital for four days with norovirus. I was so sick, and I had IVs hooked up to me, and uh, my partner must have a better immune system because uh, she did not get it, or she did a better job of uh, cleaning herself off. But, uh, that, that was really, uh, oh, God, that was terrible. Norovirus is, is a really bad funky bad thing. I don't recommend it to anybody. No, it's not, it's not funny. No, it's not that either. I'm still trying to figure this whole thing out. It's this. That's what you feel like. A bomb just landed on you. And, um, and Mr. Haybu wouldn't drive me to the hospital, so I had to drive myself. Thanks a lot, buddy. Let you fly out and get your own food. So, nothing funny about that, but, you know, occupational hazard. Uh, that's it. Um, I also ended up getting COVID in the hospital for four days. So I was in the hospital for four days with COVID, with a pulmonary embolism, and with norovirus. It all seems to be four days. I don't know. Coincidence? I don't think so. So yeah, I got COVID um, and no big deal. Everyone got COVID, you know, but I got so sick with COVID. I literally had to slink down uh, a bunch of stairs, crawl to the front door and meet the first responders. And uh, I was very hypoxic. I, I'd got pneumonia and I, I was sick as a dog dog not a bird a dog i was sick as a dog and uh absolutely miserable 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 and um when i called 911 i asked him to not send fire because i didn't want any of it was in my area and i didn't want any of my guys to uh get uh covid you know because it's so unbelievably contagious and uh they said oh we can't do that and i'm like oh crap so not only did fire come up, but the chief came out, you know, and uh, I, I felt terrible. I don't think any of those folks, you know, I stayed far away from them, went to the hospital. I don't remember a ton of the first couple days after that. I just remember asking for fire to be uh, called off. But, yeah, so that was a pretty miserable experience. Uh, and I can say I've had the, the long COVID fogginess and everything. You know, some people think it's me just being goofy. No, I'm, I haven't felt a hundred percent. I mean, I felt good enough to get by, 
uh, that's for sure. But uh, as far as hitting on all cylinders, no. COVID does a number on you, you know, and some folks know, some folks, it just beats the shit out of them. You know, I, I'm one of the lucky ones that apparently it, it found my brain or something in it. Boy, I was sick as a dog. Dog. There's no dog here. There's crickets. Yeah, I was. I get a lot of that. So, oh, another time was hilarious. Um, we had a fire on a school um, roof. A bunch of roofers uh, left their uh, mops um, up on the roof because they thought it was going to rain. It did not rain. The sun came out and uh, ignited a fire which burned through the roof uh, we had a ladder truck um, long story short i grabbed a uh, apartment bundle that's a 100 foot piece of hose to hook up to the end of the ladder which had a spigot i guess you call it for for applying water to the fire um, luckily we got to it uh, when it was just starting off someone uh, nearby uh, witnessed uh, smoke. Uh, luckily, it, it was not a school day. So no kids around to evacuate and have that chaos while we're trying to position our uh, apparatus. But I climb up on this ladder, you know, full gear, air tank, the whole deal. Um, it was quite warm, too. Um, I go to throw the bundle off the end, and I go with it. So I, I just go falling off the end of the ladder, um, and it was sticking out a ways, so this this was a little bit of a fall. Uh, absolutely nothing happened to me. Uh, another uh, hilarious incident, because it involved me, and uh, I had kind of forgotten about that. You know, we ended. Up, it's like I I did one of those. I jumped up. I'm good. I'm good. You know, you okay, man? You know, because it looked like I I killed myself, but I didn't. And uh, we took the hose, hooked it up, uh, put the fire out, and everything was cool. So it, it all worked out. Um, you know, truthfully, I was pretty sore after that, but nothing broken, nothing sprained. Uh, no reason to even uh, go to the uh, urgent care or anything. But um, years and years later, uh, about five, six years later, um, uh, a group of probies were sitting around talking, and uh, they were looking uh, at some of the older apparatus. We, we don't have that ladder anymore. That ladder truck and they were looking at it and they're like oh yeah this is the one that, that's the, that's the one that brown fell off of and i and i i kind of walked up behind him and i said i did not fall off i jumped off like like james fucking bond man you know I, we had to get water and you know so i of course that was that was my take on it so that was pretty funny um and then twice, I don't know why I've done this. You'd think I would learn after the first time, but um, I've been in a couple of fires where the the handrail uh, was on fire. And I guess just out of habit, I, you know, both of these times the fire had been knocked down somewhat, but the handrail was still smoldering and burning, but the house had been ventilated so we could stand up and walk instead of crawl. Um, this is towards the knockdown of the fire. But both of these houses were, and I, I remember, they were, uh, they were in opposite ends of our district and everything. But yeah, one one stair goes down, one stair goes up, so it's just short stairs. But uh, I was coming down from uh, upper level, and like an idiot, I reached down to grab this handrail, you know, because I'm carrying a bunch of crap. And it was uh, burning and smoldering, and it just fell apart in my hand. And I went diving head first down to the next flight of stairs down into the basement. Just crunch. And, um, you know, a few guys are like, oh, shit. Are you okay? You know, and I remember looking up and just, you know, being in a ton of pain. Again, nothing broken, nothing sprained. Just uh, my pride. And I, I looked up and I said, look out for that fucking handrail, you know. Of course, I had my uh, mask and air tank on, so it sounded like, I got a fucking handrail, guys. But I did this not once, but twice. I did it at another house. Almost identical situation. 
you know, as uh, my parents have said often, what the hell is wrong with you? So, um, I was in another uh, fire. These are mostly, actually, they're all fires. Yeah, well, you know, whatever. I'm doing fire stuff today. It's my podcast. Right, hey, boo? Are you cool with that? Yeah, he's cool with it. Um, an outdoor deck with a really high ceiling had caught on fire. Wayne's coating. Uh, me and a partner were trying to pull the parts of the ceiling down to get some water underneath. And uh, we had our pike poles and we're kind of poking at it and poking at it. And um, I'll send the entire ceiling. Now, this is wainscoting, not sheetrock. And this is about 12 feet up. So, you know, we had the 10-foot pike poles and everything. We were, and we were poking at it, poking at it, and we had our, all our gear on. And there was, you know, fire coming out from a couple different places and quite a bit of smoke. And, and all of a sudden, the entire ceiling, I, I don't know, it's, it's probably 10 by 20, this wainscoting. And... Um, it just came down on us. The whole thing, it was, again, I love to use the word cartoonish. It came down, and him and I both saw it coming down, and we both got down, took a knee, and um, put our arms up. It must have been training or instinct. And uh, the wainscoting folded over us, and like we were, you know, like sitting in a tent or something. And, you know, like the scene from the Blues Brothers where they get blown up by that RPG by, uh, I think it was uh, Carrie Fisher. And, uh, and the Blues Brothers get out from this pile of bricks and just walk away like nothing happened. Me and my partner just kind of stand up slowly, look at ourselves, look at each other, and give each other the thumbs up. And then just keep pulling down the, uh, the subroofing. There's some plywood that it, it, the wainscoting fell on. And yeah, that, I thought that was really funny. It's, I mean, obviously it sucked that this person's house had, uh, but it was outdoor um, fire and uh, smoke damage. It never entered the house. With, and, and me and my partner ended up not being hurt. But it just looked really bizarre and funny. Like we got enveloped in this big chunk of wood that, would, that was on fire. And uh, yeah, we ended up doing okay. Um, I had another... Uh, another episode, we were doing a live burn. And uh, when I, a house can fill up with uh, water. It can uh, compromise the flooring. You know, if water starts pulling, water is heavy stuff, you know, 8.37 pounds per gallon. Um, so this officer had me take a halligan. Now this isn't a, f a fire, so this is a deliberate, uh, it's called a live burn, where once a year at least we have to light a house on fire that's donated and go in and put it out, light it, put it out, light it, put but this floor, uh, it was a wood floor, and it filled up with water, and we were afraid it was going to collapse. You know, plus we were standing on it. So uh, the captain had me take the pointy part of the halligan and make a drain, which I thought was really genius. So I took this halligan, and I'm swinging it as hard as I can, putting holes in the floor. And, you know, sure enough, the water is draining right through there, you know, taking away a bunch of weight. But uh, as I was swinging it, part of the halligan caught on to my uh, mask, hooked up to my uh, SEBA, uh, you know, my breathing apparatus, um, and um, ripped my mask off. You know, so I'm in this smoky hot room with my mask, you know, goes flying off. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. Well, it came, it came off and around um, because it's, it's tied on with a bunch of rubber things. Anyhow, not important, but I was like, oh, shit. Now, we had learned how to deal with this. If your mask comes off, whatever, put it back on, open up this valve that blows all the smoke and crap out. And if you puke in it, too, it's the same thing. You can survive that. But guys have actually died from puking in their mask. And uh, I've had, you know, I haven't puked, but I've had dry heaves and everything from being overheated at calls. Uh, so it's a real thing. A lot of guys do it. It's hard, heavy work, and it's hot and lousy. But um, I actually did a, a PowerPoint uh, presentation on how to survive puking in your mask. Um, I did get a degree in fire science. I'm a scholar. But, um, and the maneuver, I, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it was named after a guy from Kansas City 
uh, fire department that had died uh, aspirating after he puked in his mask. So it's a real danger to puke into your mask. Um, nothing funny about that. Uh, nothing good about that. But uh, if you talk to firefighters, um, I think plenty of them have. Uh, and you got to learn how you got to learn how to do it, uh, how to, how to deal with it, and, and train. And uh, I know there's fire departments that will open a can of cream of mushroom soup, pour it into their mask, put it up to their face and learn how to deal with puking in your mask. So as gross as that sounds, you know, it beats the hell out of uh, becoming a May Day and, and falling down dead, you know. So um, I think the last, and the last story is, um, it's, it's more of a testament of um, the hazards of uh, firefighting. 10% um, of line of duty deaths um, are during training. Now I'm I'm on the state honor guard, um, so I I do an awful lot of uh, solemn ceremonies and color guard. So you know presenting the colors and things like that. It's a part of my uh, job. I really enjoy being in the honor guard. Um, I think it's super. I I don't enjoy it in. Oh dude, dude, he just pooped on me. He never does that. He's telling me to wrap it up. Are you telling me to wrap it up? Yeah, well. Joys of having a bird. Anyhow, uh, but I do enjoy solemn ceremonies. I think it's important to honor the people um, that have served. And uh, I, I, I can't even count the funerals I've been to. Um... And again, I've been to other ceremonies that were huge where we presented uh, the colors uh, for the event and stuff like that and Memorial Day events and things. So it's uh, that's another aspect of um, being a first responder uh, firefighter is you can join the Honor Guard. And uh, every year there's uh, training that goes on at the local National Guard um, camp um, weekend to, you know, get our skills back up to snuff. So... But um, I was on a training one time. We were flowing water, no big deal. We're out in a parking lot. We're in the prone position. <clears throat> we're laying down. We got one vet and one probie. And uh, I, was, I was a vet um, laying alongside a probie. And then there's a probie to the left of me with another vet to the left of him. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, and we were bringing the hoses up to full pressure. You know, which is like having about a two, three hundred pound guy leaning on you as hard as he can or she can. I guess he, he guy. So, um, one of the probies uh, to my left uh, lost control of his hose. It swung around, and I, I caught it just out of the corner of my eye and jumped over and covered my proby so he wouldn't get hit. Because I know that stream is like getting hit by a sledgehammer. And it was. It hit me right in the side of the head. Uh, tore my helmet off. And it literally... Um, I'm lucky I didn't rupture my eardrum or anything. Uh, it literally just about snapped my head off. It, it was that powerful of a stream. So um, it's a good thing uh, they don't use those for uh, crowd control or civil unrest anymore. There'd be a lot of people with broken necks. So, So that's it. Just wanted to lighten things up a little bit today. Talk about some of the silly things that have happened to me. Um, my motto is, nothing bad can happen to me. You know, I tell myself that, and, you know, if anyone's like, oh, aren't you worried about getting hurt? Or, And, uh, you know, of course I am. But on the other hand, I, I just tell myself, you can't get hurt. Nothing bad can happen to you. Um, maybe that's denial, and it gives me the... Uh, maybe diluted uh, uh, bravery I need to go into some of these situations. But also, you know, the training does that more than anything. But I honestly, in my heart of hearts, feel like uh, I am not going to get hurt um, doing that job. I could I could get hurt walking across the street or doing something else. But I think as far as um, EMT work or firefighting, um, I guess I have got hurt. But I haven't got hurt bad. 
most of the times I end up just crashing and burning and it looks terrible and I get up and I'm just fine. I just have the ability to take falls and walk away. I'm lucky. So anyhow, so that's some of my silly stories and uh, we'll see you next time. Remember, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Thank you. I appreciate anyone that uh, views any of these, by the way. Uh, it really means a lot to me. I enjoy doing this quite a bit. And Mr. Haybu does too. Thanks, buddy. See you next time.